Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Body Wisdom Podcast, where we discuss the mind-body connection and its relationship to health and well-being. My name is Tammy Bulmash, and I'm very excited to introduce today's guest, Alessandro Fattorini, who is joining us all the way from Bologna, Italia. Alessandro discovered the Alexander Technique in 2000 after experiencing some back pain due to a posture problem. A friend suggested the Alexander Technique might help his back. Alessandro was struck by the sense of lightness he felt at the end of the lesson. The way he reached that lightness was an indirect way of approaching the problem that he had never thought of before. He sensed a new responsibility for the way he moved, not only regarding his back pain, but in other areas of life as well. Soon, Alessandro started noticing more ease in his relationships with others as well as in front of an audience. He noticed he was more coordinated in physical activities and in playing the electric bass and decided to investigate. This led him to enrolling in the three-year training course to become a certified teacher of the Alexander Technique Center in Amsterdam. Alessandro's passion for the somatic work of the Alexander Technique led him to explore other techniques and approaches such as Feldenkrais, Tai Chi, Qigong, Watsu, Aichi, Archery, and the Japanese Sword. Alessandro also recently graduated from a two-year course for body awareness for musicians by Eleni Bosniado. Alessandro performs in theaters and concerts and has written articles for magazines and hosted radio programs. Qualified as somatic movement educator and infant development movement educator by the Sound of Body Mind Centering, he became a yoga Pilates teacher. Alessandro practices yoga, tai chi, qigong, and playing the double bass. Today, his passion is to introduce the Alexander Technique to a wider audience, such as performing artists who want to find a way to be free from tension, to those struggling with the demands of computer-based office work, and for those with back pain who would like to do without it, as well as teachers and practitioners of yoga and Pilates who want to explore possibilities in the prevention of injuries. As F.M. Alexander said, there is no right position, only a right direction. Hi, Alessandro, and welcome Hello. to our Hello. show. <laughs> wow, what, what an introduction. I, I'm really <laughs> curious to, uh, to know more about myself, to <laughs> remember all this. Thank you. Thank you for, uh, you know, inviting me to this show. I'm, I'm you know, very excited uh, to, be, to, be, to be here. It's like, wow. I mean, to be here around, you know, yes. with you. I'm yes. in Bologna right now in uh, Italy. Yes. And, um, uh, fantastic, Matthew, your your work, well, your proposal, please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm thrilled that you're here. I want to talk about a lot of things with you today. Soon I'm going to ask to talk about your video, which really I... I have to say it's one of the best Alexander Technique videos I've ever seen. It's so fun. It's so exciting. It's something that I'd love to talk about today on our podcast, which is words within words in the Alexander Technique. And first of all, before we get started, you mentioned Bologna, Italia. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your corner of the world. Now the situation in uh, in, uh, in Italy or in Bologna, which is north center, mm -hmm. uh, way between uh, Florence and Milan. It's, uh, it's very colorful, Italy. Uh, we have uh, regions, we have 20 different regions, and we have regions which are in red, some regions are in orange, and some regions <laughs> are in yellow. So it's very, it's very colorful. Oh. And, uh, and we used to have uh, just uh, you know, green and white and red uh, as uh, our Italian uh, flag. Um, but uh, probably the government is, is deciding to, to, to change the Italian flag into a lemon and uh, uh, orange and tomato. We keep the tomato. So the original was uh, tomato, mozzarella and basilico, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so uh, the moment is very, is very colorful. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, uh, in Italians, uh, these moments are facing this, this, this period as... Uh, uh, anyone else in the world, I, I suppose. At the moment here is uh, it's cold and because it's winter, the moment of our talk. And so we spend a lot of time uh, in our uh, homes. And uh, so, yes. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. You know, and I don't know if our audience is 
has picked up on your sense of humor, but this is foreshadowing the video and your sense of humor, just to give you a, a, some kind of a clue at who we're dealing with here, because you are very funny. You are just so funny. So <laughs> I want to talk to you a little bit about your sense of humor. But before we do that, I want to just talk about our topic today, which is going to be words, because I know that, and you know that when, when students first come to the Alexander Technique for the first time, they're confused by the words that we use. And I also think that our community, the Alexander Technique teachers, are confused by the words that we use, as you will notice on many of our forums and discussions of trying to decipher what the founder of the Alexander Technique, F.M. Alexander, really meant by the words that he used. So words are always a great topic for discussion. So with your permission, Alessandro, I would like to share your video and we can talk about the words within the words, silence and pronunciation. Is that all right with you? Yes, okay. you have my permission. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> FM was a man of words. He explained his ideas in words, gave orders or directions in words. Words have hidden meanings, discovered by young minds when we teach young students. They enjoy playing with words and so can we when we teach them the technique. Hello, my name is Alessandro and I teach the Alexander Technique. Yes, I know Alessandro, Alexander. But if my parents would have given me a different name, my life would be different. But can you imagine if Alexander's first name was Alexander instead of Frederick Matthias? What's your name? Alexander. And your surname? Alexander. Alexander, Alexander. A repetitive name. Repetition makes a habit. And habit is really something. It's not just a bit. A habit with no H. A hageless habit. Do you remember when Alexander was gasping? A reversed H. Habit's original meaning, one of them, was dress. Yes, habit as a dress. You go to the wardrobe and you open and you choose a habit. Just a habit for every occasion, just like a dress. Do you know the proverb? A dress doesn't make a priest. Does a habit make Alexander teacher? Hmm. So a habit doesn't make you what you are, but only what you appear to be. And you don't want to just to appear. You want to be or not to be. The question is, is the quest on or is the quest off? Which habit do you want to inhabit? Where do you want to dwell? What do you want to do well? Alexander used mirrors to, uh, for getting better at what he was doing. He didn't look at the back mirror to check if he was being followed. He looked at the front mirror to check how to proceed. He was looking for an image that would make him reflect. The self reflected, the reflexive self. And it would make distinction, the good and the ill, the good and the bad. And of course, there is also the ugly. Distinguish and unite. The pattern of the patterns. It's quite a constant in living. Quite universal, actually. Distinguish and unite. When Alexander wrote his books, he would put them on a shelf and he would call this action the use of the shelf. That's where he got the idea for his third book. Talking about books, his second book, Constructive Conscious Control of the Individual, known also, also as uh, CCC, the Italian translation of this book has been one of the most affirmative books of the year. CCC, also translated in Dutch as Ya, yeah, Ya, yeah, Ya. Yeah. The Alexander Technique is based on some uh, principles. Let's hear some of them. Primary control, a certain dynamic relationship between the head, the neck, and the back. Head, do you know back, I have a relationship with the neck? Back, oh, really? 
Me too. Head leads, body follows. Head. Come on, body. Come on, body. Come on, body, body. <laughs> use effects functioning. You and you use, plural. Fun is part of function. Function is fun in action. Do you function better when you're sad and tired or when you are happy and having fun? There is use in having fun in functioning. Better use less poor use to reach good functioning. Inhibition. Inhibition. Inhibition is not showing. When you go to an exhibition, you go out. With inhibition, you stay in. With inhibition, you don't show up, you show down. You're not showing off, you're showing on. So stay with your ambition as your mission with inhibition. Shun, 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 shun. Directions. Um, excuse me, uh, how do I go uh, from uh, um, here to where I want to be? Oh, yes, you wait for the green light until uh, your neck is free, then you follow the direction of your head going forward and up, and then while lengthening and widening on the back, you follow the direction of your knees, and there you are. The whole self. There's a hole in yourself. You probably haven't seen it before. It's just there, between your and self, between you and you. Double you. By putting a double you before the whole, the whole becomes a whole. I'd like to conclude with an Alexander paraphrase. Be aware of the spoken words because you might hear what the words have to say to you. Thank you very much for your attention. That is so fantastic. I looking up when I watch this and the the body buddy or the buddy body, like come here, buddy buddy. <laughs> it's just so funny. You can miss it, but it's just hilarious. I mean, you're so funny and you wrote this all yourself, which just makes me think you should have been a comedian if you're not already one too. So <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what inspired you to make this video? It's just so fun. Where did you get this idea? All right. Yeah. Last last year, it was in uh, March last year, I was in uh, Bristol. I was in Bristol for a, a couple of long weekends uh, mm -hmm. uh, where I attended a postgraduate training uh, for an uh, Alexander teacher working uh, in education with uh, Judy Clayman and Sue Mary. Uh, hello. And uh, so, uh, among many other uh, interesting things, there was this uh, idea of adapting uh, the language according to the persons you are speaking to, right? And of course, this is something we, we do it uh, all the times. You know, when, uh, when we speak to a friend, we speak differently than when we speak to, uh, uh, to the Queen, for example, <laughs> or to, uh, to the Pope. You know, every time I go to Rome, I speak differently to the Pope than I do with my cousin. I mean, my cousin I, uh, is more cozy. No, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, anyway, back to Bristol. Back to back to Bristol is not an Alexander um, direction. Back to Bristol. Uh, so back to the time I was in uh, Bristol, we were uh, examining the way of uh, uh, explaining or uh, communicating Alexander principles to, uh, uh, to students, to student age uh, from uh, say from from primary school to secondary and uh, beyond. So um, that, that, that was, uh, uh, I, I was uh, struck by this idea of uh, allowing myself to, um, to use those terms in a, in a different way. So to, uh, um, in the words I was accustomed to use for years, you know, like 
primary control, inhibition, direction, faulty sensor appreciation, position of mechanical advantage, use effective functioning, they have leads, the body follow, one for all, all for one. Uh, no, there was a three musketeer. <laughs> But, you know, all these are, you know, sometimes specific also uh, words. Being able to uh, to allow myself to use, to use other words was, you know, such a, a sense of, uh, of release. That, that, was, that was allowed, you know, that I, I could do that. And so um, the, the idea of, uh, I mean, I have to say that I feel affection for these words, you know, they are... It's like they are, I mean, they are belonging to uh, to the big family of uh, Alexander community where, where I, you know, I feel also I belong. So every time I, I feel I hear these words, it gives me this sense of ah, home as a home word in a way. Um, but they be, can become obstacles. They could interfere you know, with the aim uh, of facilitating an experience to a young student. You know, if I would ask uh, to a, a seven, eight, nine years old, uh, could you go into the position of a mechanical advantage? You know? I mean, the response could be unpredictable. You know, we, we have this mocking gesture in uh, Italian body language, which is a coordinated activity of uh, hands, uh, uh, arms and mouth. It, it goes a bit like, like this. Now, you need to uh, keep a hand like this and the other. If you want, you can try also. I'll let you do it. <laughs> <laughs> the other hand here, and it's about timing. By by tapping the elbow, the other goes like this. The, the end goes like this. Okay. And we have to make also whistles. So the, the total result would be something like that. And that means like, oh, are you are you crazy? What are you talking about? <laughs> so I mean, this is the necessity also to adapt in uh, words, uh, especially in this particular context, which is. Uh, 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 teaching to, to, to young students. And uh, uh, even, even to convey this message of the Alexander um, principle, even to adapt uh, the language you know, uh, to do so. So I, I think uh, knowledge uh, works best uh, when uh, it's in a process. You know? um, so knowledge itself uh, could be considered as a, as a process works better not when it's static but when it's ongoing and so digging into other ways to uh, convey this message i uh, began to also uh, um, exploring creativity for expressing the meaning of these alexander principles and that uh, um, i remember also including sign language um, i remember some years ago during my, my training uh, i you know I, I came across this uh, I think it was Direction uh, uh, Journal, and uh, was about how to convey this uh, message to, to non-hearing, uh, to deaf people. Um, uh, when I was in Amsterdam, I was living in Amsterdam doing the training, I had the uh, privilege, in a way, to, to work as a sound technician for a deaf theater company. Wow. Yeah, I, I mean, sound technician for a deaf, you know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But anyway, <laughs> and I was, oh, wow. So uh, impressed and so 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 wonderful to to see how they were using uh, hands and arms, body expression, facial expression to, you know, to you know just in a few detail uh, uh, gestures to express uh, a concept, and so um, the idea of uh, getting to the essence of the Alexander using uh, some gesture uh, is something we explored also in Bristol with Judith and uh, Sue. Um, so we came to this uh, idea of uh, saying stop, a gesture like this, stop, right? Think and expand. Okay, so stop, think and expand. So by playing also with our uh, you know, our system, our bodily gesture, it's a way also not getting into certain uh, uh, embodying, uh, embodied code, uh, our, our expression. And so uh, that help also can help to, uh, to memorize, can serve the memory if we write in, in our body in a way. And um, so that, the idea of this, uh, you know, started to grow uh, there. And uh, 
And later for a, um, a July convention, which was supposed to be in uh, London, and after March, you know, with the pandemic, everything, you know, you know, turned the, the earth stopped, <laughs> and so we were just rushing, right? and um, and turned uh, uh, the other way around. So that was um, um, the decision was to make it online, and I was asked to to do um, to do a short video on it. And I remember uh, the idea of uh, you know what, what what shall I talk about? And they say yo. Um, uh, do something funny, you know. <laughs> yeah. You're funny. <laughs> it's difficult. It's like, okay, sleep, sleep, sleep. Uh, you won't sleep. And there was this um, um, uh, obstacle in the way of language. Uh, I, I, I wasn't sure at the beginning if my playing with these words would have the same effect that would have in my own uh, native language, which is in Italian. I, I do play with words in Italian, of course. And uh, so, you know, I, I wasn't quite sure of uh, if I would have the same result in, in English. So, and the, the test was, uh, if this will make me laugh myself, maybe there is something about it now. So I, you know, I just started to write this and then I proposed to uh, Peter uh, Bacock, uh, Judy Klayman, as you marry and, uh, they said, yeah, okay. <laughs> and uh, I was quite, you know, um, uh, yeah, su surprised in a way. And But that was fun. That was fun. So that, this is how this idea of the video came out. Yes, from it's, your question. It's, I, you know, I, I could see you when we were watching the video. I could see you still laughing. So if you can make yourself laugh, then you know you're funny. You know, because I was just, it's so funny. It's so clever. Um, I don't know if you also had a fascination with words before this. Like, do you have, because uh, it seems like you really are drawn to the nuances of language and maybe because you, I don't know how many languages you speak, but I know you at least speak English and Italian. So I think as uh, being bilingual, you probably have even more of an affinity to, to words, I would think. Yeah, what, what I found out in this pro in this um, investigation, in a way, uh, how words can contain some deeper meanings, and uh, the key to access to these uh, meanings uh, could be uh, the sound, how the word resonates uh, with other words or within the words itself. That could be uh, the, the word can be con containing some other words. So uh, this is something uh, uh, that I, it's, it's really fascinating for me, especially when you uh, have to choose when you're writing, you, you know, you've been an author, you know how, when to choose, should I choose one word or the other one? Right. And so uh, going back to the etymology of the word, sometimes uh, uh, that, that, that's the, uh, the revealing uh, uh, answer to it. So you know which one uh, to choose. And so I found out some, um, some interesting uh, um, uh, results, like in the word habit, mm -hmm. for example. Habit uh, uh, meaning the original word of, uh, the original meaning of the word habit was, uh, was dress. You know, habit, habit as a dress, as I you know, said in the, in the video. So being habit so central in the Alexander technique, because uh, has to do be uh, about the way we, uh, we we behave, the the way we move, the way we think, and uh, and this has to do with uh, with our habits, with our uh, patterns. I use also the word pattern, which comes more from a somatic approach, and I like I like the word pattern because it has uh, uh, maybe a more a visual effect in, in a way. Mm -hmm. So it's something. Uh, that could be more uh, traceable in a way. And it's a word, uh, maybe it's a more specific word. Um, habits uh, is a quite common word, uh, especially we use it for you know, bad habits. <laughs> but the habit, uh, not necessarily, um, uh, is, uh, is bad. There are you know, good habits uh, too, like brushing teeth before going to a sleep, for example. Yes. Uh, and uh, habits, uh, um, but what can we say about habits? <laughs> well, <laughs> how, how would you, I guess, differentiate like what people think of habits, like smoking, that's a bad habit, gotta, 
you know, get rid of that bad habit or sleeping habits. But how, that's how I think we know of habits in everyday language. But how would you differentiate that to people who aren't familiar with the Alexander technique? Because habit is a word that we use as an example of a word with kind of a double meaning for us, at least in the Alexander technique community. So how would that word shift in its meaning or maybe not shift, but maybe open up to become broader in its meaning with the Alexander technique lens? Yeah. I think in the, uh, in the attempt of bringing the principle of the Alexander Technique more comprehensible to a, a, a wider audience, so to establish more uh, um, a common ground in a way, so something that can be you know, understood, that can resonate with the other person, uh, the use of uh, analogy is very important. And when analogy is motivated by, say, by the, the root or by the original uh, meaning of, uh, of the word or the word within the word, mm -hmm. um, that, that gets more uh, uh, legitimate in a way. So considering the habit as, uh, as a dress, I like this analogy because, uh, I mean, think of, uh, Tammy, think of when you are wearing some uh, uh, sportive uh, uh, clothes, for example. Every day. Sporty clothes every day. <laughs> That's my uniform. <laughs> how, how, I mean, you feel more engaged with, with, with moving, with having more uh, a sporty. Attitude. Okay, no, I'm, I'm mistaking sporty with pajamas. No, I meant pajamas. Is <laughs> sporty, not so much. <laughs> all right, well, well, you know, all right. Suppose, suppose uh, you're, you're wearing a sporty dress. That, that makes you uh, sort of feel um, a, a an attitude which is different than if you're wearing a, like a, a, a classic if you go to a wedding or something mm -hmm. so the way you uh, you behave in a way uh, is according also to the dress you're wearing think of the importance in a theater of the costume for example that has to fit the character so the character is, is wearing a certain dress because he's acting in a certain way what, what I suggest is uh, that when we are wearing uh, certain uh, habits, uh, certain dresses, uh, certain clothes also, that could inspire us in a way of a certain attitude. So habit has to do also with attitude and attitude has to do so much with the Alexander Technique is about attitude as well. Attitude is also synonymous of, uh, uh, of posture in a way. You know? So all these are, are related, are connected. But coming to a, back to coming back to an of a, of a, uh, of a dress, this idea that we can choose as we can choose a dress in our uh, what call you closet? What? What, what you keep in the closet? Skeleton? It's in the closet. Not the dress, also in the closet, right? <laughs> so, so as we can choose as uh, as uh, the way we want to feel, in a way we can have uh, some choice on what we want to cultivate, what we want to be inspired uh, uh, by the habit we choose in a way. So um, I, I think this is something to, uh, to, to consider in a way, these analogies as, a, again, as a means whereby, you know, where, where can I buy the means? <laughs> <laughs> the means or the genes? <laughs> where, where, <laughs> <laughs> jeans, where am I? <laughs> yeah, where, where to buy jeans, for example, or some clothes, or some dress, mm -hmm. or some uh, habits. Mm -hmm. you know, so habits as a uh, as a means. Uh. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, this is becoming a habit now. How we're gonna, how I'm gonna be looking at words is going to, I think, become, I think, a good habit because I think it's so important to explore words and their multiple meanings, especially habits. And I think that's so central to the Alexander technique because when people, you know, hear the word habit, they're like, oh, you know, I don't have any bad habits. I quit smoking 10 years ago and, you know, what, whatever it is that then you kind of introduce them to different kinds of habits in, in the Alexander technique lens. And it's um, a great opportunity to, like you said, instead of thinking about bad habits, to also look about a way to introduce good habits, to create an opportunity for these good habits that are really or natural, they're natural and innately in us, these habits that we had as small children, to kind of make room for them again, I think, to, yeah. to come to life. And a habit, in order to be in installed in a way, it, it takes some time. 
Uh, so there are uh, there are certain ways. I mean, I don't I don't pretend to be exhaustive on the on the subject. Of, of course, you know there are some uh, fabulous uh, books like the, the Power of Habit by uh, Charles uh, Dahig, or uh, also Atomic Habits by James Clear. But in the Alexander, um, I, I look at it as a sort of uh, um, adding like uh, layers. So wh when a habit is established, so making a habit of being comfortable, for example, is something that, you know, we need to practice in a way by by repeating. And then when uh, when is we start to, uh, uh, to uh, have this habit of looking for being comfortable, you know, it's, it's hard to get back into uncomfortableness. <laughs> <laughs> when you open the door, they say, when you open the door of awareness, once it's open, it cannot be closed. It doesn't yes. close again. It doesn't. I don't know, it's, it's, you need to call someone to fix it in a way, but then why, why bothering? No, once it's open, it's open. So in this term, and this terms has to do with a sort of uh, uh, maybe a, a evolutionary also uh, prospect. Okay. So uh, by building, uh, yeah, by building uh, uh, habits, habits is, is really to consider not, not just a bit, as I say in the video, Habit is really something. Yeah, um, it is something. It, you you also yeah. mentioned something that um, I think that the words that you touched on in your video are so important because you you made them very easy and accessible to understand, but they're pretty. I I don't want to call them complicated, but they are a bit complex terms to kind of wrap your head around. Also, that say for example, saying let your neck be free to somebody who's never had an Alexander technique lesson. Well, my neck is already free. What do you mean? You know, so like something like that. And so inhibition is another word. It, it Inhibition from the Freudian sense, you know, when you let down your inhibitions, it's kind of like go wild, get loose, you know, don't worry about consequences. And inhibition has a completely different kind of meaning in the Alexander technique um, in our language, in our AT jargon. So could you maybe explain, I know this is a hard one because it's, it's a, a big leap to go from inhibition from the traditional Freudian sense that people know of the word to what it means in the Alexander technique world. Yeah, I'm already sweating. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I think uh, um, the, the, the the traditional uh, or the jargon, the uh, Alexander technique jargon, is, is very interesting. It's very, it's very fascinating. It has a sort of resonance, an historical resonance, also. Um, so it's a sort of a document. Uh, it's a recording of uh, something that was uh, conceived in a certain period, in a certain time. So it has, it's, it has some some value, and uh, that has been. Uh, um, um, repeated uh, all over through the decades uh, by people who are passionate about it. So they are uh, charged words. So these words uh, have some, uh, you know, uh, power in a way. So I, I really believe in the, in, the, in the power of words. And uh, we can bring many examples. You know, just a word could be yes or no make a total difference, you know, so from day to night, you know, ju just one word. Would you marry me? No. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> oh. <laughs> so, and it's just one word, yes. little. Th there is uh, some, some theory, of course, about this, some theory and practice, uh, and uh, that's been uh, not just for decades, but also for centuries. Mm -hmm. If you would think of the, the practice of mantras, you know the sounds within the words, especially in the in the Sanskrit uh, uh, alphabet. So there is a resonance in our body. So we can go really very uh, very deep and very subtle with, with this. Um, but my my idea is to uh, to keep the tradition. Tradition is important, also. You no, know, is 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 looking is looking back. Of course, you know we know how important it is to have a back a back supporting us. We have. Uh, uh, the, the, the back part is supporting our front body. The back is a strong part. The, our, our front body is, uh, is the more the receiving part in a way. So we are sustained by the back from our past and we are going, you know, and receiving the, the future in a way. Um, and 
And, and so the importance of using these words is a matter, I think, of, um, uh, of timing, also of, of when, when to use them. And uh, um, if they are difficult uh, words, um, I think uh, we, we could use a simple words for beginning. And then when simple uh, uh, turns into difficult, um, I mean, it's the other way around, actually. <laughs> a difficult thing, uh, it, it, I mean, is difficult before it is easy. Yes. You know? So there is a this transformation. And uh, so the, the a word like primary control or inhibition in Alexander terms or direction, you know, contains a, a, um, um, uh, a concept in a way. But this concept uh, it's like, a, well, I need to crystallize this concept and I use this, uh, this word. But, but before, maybe we have to make it this uh, easy to, to understand, to comprehend. It's like a, a little, it's like the, uh, uh, how you call it, a knot to a, a fazzoletto. It's something to remember. You know? So we need some aids also to, to remember things. And so these words are uh, like, uh, uh, I don't know the word in English, scrigno, that you open, wow, you find a treasure. There's so, so much in, in it, in there. It's, I mean, the, the specific weight of this word, <laughs> <laughs> you can't carry it in your, in your, uh, you know, in your bag. Yes. So you need, a, you know, a trolley at least. What are you carrying? Oh, just Alexander words. <laughs> so in the, in the digital area, uh, era, uh, we, we need to use some lighter words, um, uh, I, I think, uh, in order to go to the to the heavy stuff. No, in uh, in Sanskrit, in the, in the yoga world, we have this word guru. You know, the word guru, which is also used, uh, uh, of course, uh, commonly. The meaning of the word guru is something uh, uh, something that is heavy, boom, pesante. But not, uh, you know, heavy is like, come on, you are so heavy. Heavy in a sense that it has a weight. So the, the idea of a heavy weight is something also, I think, is related to what we do in the Alexander. Means feeling our own weight. And feeling our own weight means uh, also feeling that we are here. It's a way of uh, presence, you know, when we are standing in the... You know, just uh, in front of a chair, for example, in Alexander, <laughs> you know, we can feel the whole weight in our two feet, you no, know, our little feet. So this idea of uh, um, of being present or having weight is also, uh, you know, something to consider, especially when we come to the weight of our head. You know? Yes. Um, uh, that's no <laughs> scientific. Uh, no. <laughs> so yes, yes, please go ahead. No, no, no. I'm thinking about the weight of my head. You know, thinking about <laughs> the weight of it. You know, sitting on my neck. But that, there is no, no specific uh, uh, pro uh, scientific proof that our ideas uh, have a weight. So if we think of heavy, something heavy, you know, we feel, oh, we feel, uh, uh, we, we think of feathers, you know, for example, uh, it changes. But it definitely does something um, to our uh, uh, um, attitude if we think something, uh, um, you know, light. Uh, we, we, feel, we, feel, we feel lighter. Uh, actually, in sign language, this is the sign for uh, lighter. Oh, um, fantastic. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I wanted to ask you something yeah. <laughs> before, right, like, like, before I forget, you, you mentioned something really funny and, you know, and clever in the video about the in and inhibition. What did you mean by that? You were, you know, like exhibition out, inhibition in. And I thought that was a really clever way of kind of bringing in. What, when you first thought of that, what were you kind of the picture that you were kind of creating in your mind with that? I think... Um, um, has to do uh, with balancing, um, balancing the inner felt sense uh, with, with uh, the, our surroundings, with uh, other people, with objects, uh, with our environment. And uh, this balancing uh, could be um, uh, realized 
um, only if we see this is I mean when we balance something we balance uh, uh, between uh, uh, between two things no that, that that's where the balance uh, what, what is what, where is the balance okay I hold it okay here's the balance <laughs> yeah so this balance here is between uh, our uh, inner world and our outer world in a way so the word in inhibition uh, contains the word in so that, that made me think about uh, about this uh, uh, inner sense um, and um, um, how to um, well yeah the idea of uh, of of taking time also of uh, not get lost in in uh, you know in the others not get lost in uh, in the object we, we touch, for example. And so keeping this balance, keeping this awareness, which uh, on the other side of the, of the scale, if we are too much within us, uh, then uh, we, we cut off uh, uh, from the rest. So inhibition for me means also, um, in a more plain words, it means uh, uh, stopping. No, that, that's the word we use, stop. But even better, pose. I, I, I like the idea of uh, uh, who was Judith. I think Judith Clemmer of the word pressing the 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 the, the key pose. You know when you're playing uh, or you used to play. You know a, a CD, for example. You know a CD. <laughs> remember a CD? Yes, I play pose, and then again, I think of the um, effect it has uh, in music. You know, a pose is something that is written there. And it has uh, uh, the same amount of ink, so the same amount of importance that the the notes you uh, you have to play. So um, a, a pose, uh, it is a note. A pose is is music. You need the pose to breathe, for example. So uh, while you are posing, you are still um, you are still playing in, uh, in music, um, and the pose has an effect. You know, say a break for effect, for example. So if I say something important, I'm going to tell you something very important, and that is, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a, a, a pose has an effect, and uh, um, I think in English it's called the break for effect or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Pause effect break. So, break. yeah, effect break, and um, and so it breaks something, and when you break something, you. You, you know you divide and so creating a space between uh, the two broken parts so and there is you know in that space that space there's a, a, an opportunity in a way so uh, um, posing has to do with uh, 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 with this space I would say the space between uh, before and after because we know what happened before, but we don't know what's going to happen after. So, and making this pause is, is, is that's that's the place where maybe we, we you know we can have a, a part in it on to uh, uh, to make realize what what we would like to have been uh, to have realized, for example. Right? So inhibition is also when we talk about space. There's a space also space for what we can do many things. In space we can dance in space okay but we can also make some uh, wish so it's also a space for wishing uh, exhibition is also a place out mind that uh, <laughs> inhibition is also a place where we we don't want to stay too long no because if i make a pause for effect and i take it too long then it will lose its effects yes. like oh come on what what no so it has to do with timing so pause has to do with timing inhibition has to do with time stopping has to do with time okay you stop you know red light you wait for the traffic and then you go you can't be you know after a while you start to get nervous so it has to do with time inhibition has to do with time and uh, um, uh, direction which is uh, another important part of uh, uh, of the principles of the Alexander technique, I would say it has to do more with uh, with well with space. While uh, uh, inhibition has to do more with time, time timing. 
So, I mean, these two <laughs> are inhibition creates space, but it's with time that you go across that space. Right. Sounds like physics. I... Sounds a bit like a physics class. <laughs> It, yeah. <laughs> it, it is. It's it's a lot of, well, that's what the Alexander Technique, I think, experience can feel like in the beginning is kind of, it's so broad and it's new concepts uh, for anyone that doesn't have an inclination towards physics like myself. You know, that was kind of just how I, how the experience was to me at first is like you said, the weight of it, like the guru, you know, the weight of all of this um understanding that you don't understand like this idea of i don't know anything which is kind of like how when you start the alexander technique you realize you know less and less and less than you think that you knew which is also the magic of it because uh peer teachers are in their prime in their 80s and 90s in the alexander technique what other profession could you really find other than in the far east you know where teachers are revered for the knowledge they have accumulated you know yeah, ah, absolutely. Uh, understanding is also, I mean, uh, understand is uh, such an important uh, uh, word in, uh, in Alexander. And as I was saying before, I mean, this knowledge in, uh, uh, in, in, is a process, not just something that is just given to you. Okay, take it, boom, take inhibition, take primary control, take a direction. Mm -hmm. it, it's the process you make of this, of this concept that makes it uh, so important understand uh, also so important in alexander when we stand in like again you know before um, a, a chair if we think that we are standing but what's underneath you know under the standing you know and what what is upstanding we, we think <laughs> of the direction opposite direction for example yes. so uh, again the words can uh, you know can stimulate yes. uh, can stimulate this uh, sort of reflection if we want yes. to if we like to it's fantastic i i love it i wanted before i let you go and i don't want to let you go just yet but i wanted to kind of talk about one more word that has uh just such a a vast meaning or broad meaning in in um, our world and also in not the don alexander technique world but when when you were talking about inhibition you were talking about pausing or stopping and i, and I was thinking about when uh before gps and i would always get lost and never know where i was driving to which is kind of like a metaphor i think for life in many ways <laughs> but you know it's like stop and ask for directions right which i never did so um, i would just call my mom on a payphone back in the day when there were payphones and just not figure out you know where I was going and but it's the same idea with the Alexander technique where in this way it can apply where you want to stop and ask for directions but here the directions are very different so I was wondering if you could maybe also give me your interpretation because I, I love hearing the Alessandro version of the Alexander technique <laughs> the Alex and Alex <laughs> so <laughs> if you will yeah um, yeah, direction. As you, yeah, as you say, when you ask in direction, uh, uh, wh wh where where do I have to go to? Um, wh wh where shall I go to go where I want to go? Mm -hmm. oh, so if you don't know before, <laughs> so how can you ask? Right. Such, 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 you know? So that makes you, uh, you know, questioning where right. also where you want to go. Mm -hmm. If you uh, talk about directions, direction. Um, my idea also is that uh, when a uh, fan, which I say hello because I know he's listening to us um, in this moment, um, he used this word uh, as uh, uh, as director. You know, he, he was from a theater man, he was coming from theater. So as uh, as director, he's directing uh, his uh, actors or actors. So uh, the the idea of directing, uh, you know, uh, oneself. But in that case, you you are the actor. No, you are both the actress and the director. You know, I use also the word, I read that you know, I use the word uh, order, orders, you know, giving order, which for some people it might sound a bit uh, direct, uh, you know, order, you order something uh, to someone and, uh, and uh, you know, you don't tell me, you know, what, what to do. And also, Alexander is this specific thing which I, I enjoy so much of being indirect. No, and uh, um, about this, there's this power of being indirect uh, that we find also in mythology, uh, where uh, uh, what's his name, Perseo, uh, could uh, 
uh, de de defy the, the monster with the snakes in her hair, the Medusa, Gorgone, uh, that she had the power to turn into stone uh, by her, just by her look. If you look at her in her eyes, no, inhibition, <laughs> forever. <laughs> 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 but, but he used an indirect way to uh, to cut her head uh, by looking at the reflection of uh, his shield. So he wasn't looking at her in the eyes, otherwise he would turn into a stone and, uh, you know, the story would have another ending. But using the, 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 the reflection of the shield, so okay, she, he cut her and suck it and uh, cut her head. So this indirect procedure as, uh, you know, Pedro de Alcantara, which I say also a lot to him, Ciao Pedro, <laughs> would say, uh, is, is a particular of the Alexander technique. And this is something uh, so, uh, such a resource of uh, facing a, a problem or something. Uh, how do I solve? Because our tendency is to go, wow, to go straight to it. And the straight line, not necessarily is the, um, is the most efficient. Uh, uh, if you will look at, at our bodies, for example, if we look at our our bones, there's no such a, a thing like a straight bone in our bodies. Maybe just the tibia, kind of uh, straight, but all the rest are all you know, turning. You know? And uh, so the straight line is is mostly uh, an uh, an idea, and also making it. Uh, um, indirect, uh, maybe maybe we find something else on the way, you know. So making more, you know, circular ways, and then we come back again to to the world of uh, uh, of uh, patterns you know, of uh, habits as well. So they are all uh, inter interrelated, and uh, this wor word. Another thing I want to say about the word uh, order, uh, which is an imperative. No, uh, in grammar, you say an imperative in uh, in English, I suppose. Yes. When you do this, do that. Mm -hmm. uh, but in grammar, there's not a, there's not such a thing as uh, the imperative in the first person singular. So that means that I cannot tell myself what to do. <laughs> you know, do 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 this. <laughs> it's like in clothing. It's me telling me what to do. I tell I what to do. <laughs> That, that's, that's creating a sort of division, a, a, a split. Who is right? You know, <laughs> uh, and so, uh, so grammar is also telling us something. Again, words telling us something uh, about uh, I cannot tell myself something. So I, I need to find a way, uh, an indirect uh, way. Uh, so... Uh, so the word order reminds me also something that you order, you know, like something you order, you order pizza, you know, and then they deliver it to you, deliver, not deliver. And you have to be careful about the liver, in fact, when, when they deliver <laughs> too much pizza, for example. Yeah. Direct, uh, looking at the words, di diretto, dire direttore, regista in italiano, uh, director, um, the, the second part of the word rector means uh, in Latin means right. And again, there's not, uh, uh, there's not a right born in our body. So the idea of right and wrong, or right and left, uh, and we go back to directions, uh, is something to, uh, to, uh, to again, to, you know, to, to consider, which is quite present in Alexander's uh, idea of, uh, you know, what is, uh, uh, what is good and bad. Of course, there's also the ugly, but there's something, uh, uh, there's something else. So all these words can, uh, um, yeah, can, uh, can suggest some uh, deeper meanings. Uh, and my idea is not that, uh, that I'm, uh, uh, that I'm telling, uh, you know, the, 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 the truth in a way, but it's, it's something to, to find out for, for each one of, of us, you know, um, because uh, if we consider ourselves as, a, again, as attitude, as, as a whole, you know, as a whole with a W in front of us, you know, um, uh, there's no whole in ourselves. If there's a Hole, we are losing. We are losing. Uh, we are losing air, like an inner tube of a of a bicycle. You no, know? 
the, the air is coming out and the tire gets flat. The tire is tired you know, and uh, we need energy to make it spin. So we can't afford a flat tire. We need to rest, maybe, maybe in a semi-supine position <laughs> for a while. Yes. <laughs> You are fantastic. You are so funny. You know, it's it's kind of like coming full circle because in the in the beginning when I was reading your bio, there was a part that you quoted for MF Alexander FM Alexander when he said there's no right position, only a right direction. And I think if you had to kind of give a one word description of direction that would maybe a one sentence a description that might be the most vague yet clear description about really thinking about direction not as a position or destination but as an open-ended kind of exploration of where we're going thank you tammy for asking me this uh, i will remember <laughs> i will remember <laughs> <you>. <laughs> I remember, I remember who, who said this thing. Uh, I apologize for writing you a long letter because uh, I didn't have time to write you a short one. You know? So coming to a, a, a synthesis uh, in a way, it's, you know, it's, that, that, that's, a, that's a hard work. Yes. So uh, synthesis of the word uh, uh, direction, I... Uh, I'm. Uh, I, I like. Uh, mm, I, I like the idea of a compass, right? mm -hmm. and uh, that could be a, a, an image of uh, la, la rosa dei venti, of the winds, where the winds are bringing you, the, where the winds are leading you to. How do you go against the wind? How go with the wind? How you, are you gone with the wind? <laughs> Uh, when, when going with wind doesn't mean necessarily that you wait for wind on your back to go forward. If you take uh, the, the 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 boat, the sail, the sailing boat, for example, uh, they they go against the wind and they turn, they transfer. I don't know how they do, it, but you know, there, there maybe someone, the audience can explain us. They go against in, in order to to go forward. They go against it. They turn into favor, and this fascinates me. Yes. So direction is again a dynamic process of taking a force and maybe redirecting. Uh, but again, we need we need to know the direction. Where where do I want to go? Want right. to just uh, be oh, there or <laughs> my intention? Yes. And this is something uh, that um, mostly we we find we find out as we uh, as we living. Yes, it's fantastic. Is there any final words? Words that you'd like to share, words of wisdom, perhaps. No pressure. <laughs> yeah, I like uh, the the title also you choose for this uh, words within words, and now you said again uh, words of wisdom. That's there's a lot of W in this, <laughs> like in the, in the www uh, dot uh, uh, at. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The the word the word wide. Uh, uh, was the World Wide Web, mm -hmm. you know, the World Wide uh, Wild, the Wild World, yes. and the World Wide. So this connection, uh, being being in a connection, I, I much enjoying this conversation with you. I'm in Bologna, Italy. You are so you are in Florida, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And uh, so, but we still having a you know good time here and a good mm -hmm. conversation. And so yes. this uh, is is bringing us more together. So uh, I think a final word could be. Uh, connection, which, uh, by the way, rhymes with direction. <laughs> hey, Alessandro, thank you so much. It is so fun, so fun to talk with you today. Fun in function, fun in conversation. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Tammy, and uh, I really appreciate your work. I'd like to say, you know, hello to everyone listening to this, and you'll be listening to uh, this. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for attention. Grazie, Tami. Thank you. Thank you.